Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and today's video is going to be going over lack of participation with giveaways. If you've struggled with a lack of participation with giveaways, I am here to go over my experience uh, with that and um, also my experience with heavy participation in giveaways and kind of uh, do a little compare and contrast and um, provide tips based on what methods I've found to work best in my business and also with other businesses uh, that I work with. So if you are interested in this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Please make sure that you are subscribed and let's get right into the video. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna say is if you've been following this channel, then you know that typically um, every year I go over my Black Friday strategies. I went over my Black Friday strategy this year and last year, um, and I plan on doing the same next year and the years to come. And I tried something a little bit different or a lot different this year. Um, I still took some of the best practices from my previous Black Friday strategy that worked really well. And I also took some, um, I'm thinking now, I think I did my Black Friday strategies and tips for, I think this is my third. Have I been on YouTube for three years or has it been two? I'm not sure. But anyways, the whole point of me saying that was to say that I like going over my strategies and things that have worked and things that didn't. Um, I did take some best practices from my other strategies and implemented them into my strategy this year. However, I also tried to do some things that were completely different to see how it would work and what outcomes I would have. Um, I say this a lot on my channel, you know, being an entrepreneur, one of the cool fun parts about being an entrepreneur is being able to experiment, you know, try some things, take out some things, put in some things and kind of see what works best for you and your business. And also it's very interesting and a little challenging to make sure that you don't get so routine with your business um, that you actually end up losing that sense of anticipation and excitement with your business that is definitely needed for giveaway for sales um, and to really keep that that energy going with your business and your customers so I want to say this first um, one thing there's actually two things that I think contributed to my giveaway this year during Black Friday uh, not going as I intended it to go it did not go well uh, for my giveaway now the reason that I say that is because of lack of participation now that's contributed to two things like I mentioned the two things are number one, lack of promoting. And also number two would have to be um, interference. I don't want to call it interference. Uh, I will say multi-marketing, multi-campaigning um, or multi-marketing, whatever you want to call it. But those are two factors that I can definitely say contributed to lack of participation uh, with my Black Friday giveaway this year. Now, I've never tried to do a giveaway in the middle of a marketing campaign. When I do different marketing campaigns for Black Friday, um, when I do different marketing campaigns for certain products or um, services, I know when I introduced my ebook, I had a campaign as to how I was going to market that. Uh, I marketed that on YouTube, on my website, on my social media platforms, and I marketed it frequently um, so that you know I could get the awareness out for my book and actually promote it properly. That's one thing that I'm going to be talking about a little bit further um, on this channel and also into next year about how to make sure that we're promoting properly. Because a lot of people, a lot of companies promote and there's not just a set in stone way to promote your business properly because every business truly is different. And every business has a different you know, type of vibe with their customers and clients. Even if you have the same customers or clients, it can be a different vibe. For example, if you go to a really high end restaurant, you know, and then one day and then the next day you go to a McDonald's, it doesn't mean that you're a different person. But when you're at this high end restaurant, you know, you may be dressed different. You may be looking to spend differently versus when you're at McDonald's. So that's the same kind of concept. It's like you may have the same customers, but because your business is so unique, the vibe between your customers and the relationship between your customers and the expectation between your customer and that other business can be completely different. And we're going to be talking about that later on in this channel. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe and make sure that your post notifications are on so that you don't miss any um, any videos that I, I drop in regards to that or other business tips. Um, but let me go ahead and get right into it. So lack of participation with giveaways. I have some notes here, so I'm going to be looking down frequently to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, but let me just explain this really quickly too, just so you can have a background. So what I did this time around um, is I did my, I planned out my Black Friday marketing strategy and in the plan of my Black Friday marketing strategy, I was doing, I was going to do a giveaway. I actually did a giveaway 
And I did that giveaway for a week and I promoted that only to my newsletter um, family. So only people that are subscribed to my newsletters were able to get that information for the giveaway. I only promoted it once. I didn't send multiple emails and I didn't even resend that email to email subscribers um, that were a part of my newsletter family didn't receive. So it was just kind of like a one shot thing. And that's why I say promoting the lack of promotion definitely contributed to the lack of interaction with my giveaway. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Let me go ahead and start with the first tip. The first tip that I have is surveying customers and clients to get a feel for what hot items are at the moment. So I've mentioned this in my other video. I created a video about a year or so ago in regards to tips on how to uh, do giveaways and position giveaways for your business. And um, one thing that I discovered while I was doing giveaways, because this is not my first giveaway. This was my first giveaway position in the way that I did it this time in the middle of my Black Friday marketing uh, campaign. However, it wasn't my first giveaway. Uh, during giveaways, I've given out here before, I've given out gift cards. You can really be creative as to um, what you're going to give out. And when I owned my salon, we would have different conversations uh, amongst the staff as far as if we wanted to do giveaways for free hairstyles or giveaways for back to school products. And so there's just many different things that you can give away for your giveaway. But one thing that I would recommend doing, especially if you're newer to your business and you really don't have a clear feel for who your target audience is or who your current customers are, I would definitely survey them. You can use, I believe it's, is it Survey Monkey? Um, I haven't looked at surveys in so long for businesses, but there are different surveys out there that you can send via your email mailing list or that you can, um, there's different polls that you can post on your YouTube if you have a YouTube channel for your business or yourself. Different uh, ways that you can take polls on, um, you know, Facebook, uh, or um, I don't I don't think they're positioned or structured as polls, but there's ways that you can ask questions and get feedback to get an idea for what your customers and clients want. So that would be the first thing that I would recommend doing if you are noticing a lack of participation with your giveaways. A lack of participation doesn't mean that you're giving away the wrong product, doesn't mean that you're offering the wrong service. Um, but I would say a good starting point is to get an idea for what your customers and clients do actually want. Because for giveaways, although it's not a lot of work um, or, you know, depending on how you structure your giveaway, a lot of giveaways don't have a lot, a lot of steps. Typically, I've seen giveaways with around three to five steps. Um, but even to do those three to five steps, and I've talked about this in other videos, you want to make sure that it's something that your customers, your clients, your audience finds valuable uh, and worth doing those steps in order to achieve what you're giving out. So that would be my first tip, you know, and, and I've also gone over the benefits of uh, doing giveaways for your business and for the particular campaign that you're working on. If you are interested in that, I'll go ahead and drop that video below. Um, but yeah, survey your customers and clients to get a feel for what the hot items are at the moment. Um, like I said, you don't necessarily have to give out hair because you're a hair company. You don't necessarily have to give out shirts because you're a clothing company. You don't, you don't have to do that. You can give out gift cards. You can look into, um, different services that you offer, uh, to, to provide free or, or just heavily discounted. You can look at, um, I don't know, whatever you, you, you can just be creative, but you don't have to give away, uh, what you're selling. I think that's another misconception, a very common misconception that a lot of um, businesses have, especially when I'm doing consultations and they're like, look, I just started my business. I don't have a lot of inventory. I don't have money invested to send out, you know, three bundles and a, a closure or a frontal. What else can I give out? Be creative. You can give out different things. I've given out Sephora gift cards, like I mentioned. Uh, it just depends on, you know, what feels good to you, what you can afford, and also what your customers are going to find value in. So even if you want to survey um, and offer a couple different options to your audience to see exactly um, what they're interested in so that you can kind of get an idea and engage and ultimately you make the decision. The next thing that I want to go over is promote. Now, this is something that I struggled with this time. Um, not even really struggled with. I just didn't do uh, well. Um, so I guess you can say I struggled with it. I, I know about promoting, but I can say that it's very, it was very different for me and also challenging to promote to marketing campaigns at the same time. So when you do a survey, in my eyes, that's a marketing campaign. That's what you're you're wanting to promote. You're wanting to promote your giveaway. And when you're structuring different Black Friday uh, sales and incentives for your business, that's another marketing campaign because you're also wanting to market that. You're wanting that to get out as well. When you're trying to combine two and push two out at the same time, um, 
that can be challenging because it's kind of like, you know, you're serving two masters, you know, one of them you're going to love a little bit more, pay a little bit more attention to, and the other one may go under the wayside. Not all the time, but sometimes that can happen. And so, um, and I'm just saying that, you know, not necessarily saying your business is a master or anything like that. So let's not go too far into it, but you know what I mean? I'm just saying, typically, if you have two things in front of you, one, one may get more attention than the other, uh, if you're not balancing them correctly. So I focused so much on my Black Friday marketing strategy, which went a lot better than I anticipated it going because towards the middle of my Black Friday campaign, I was a little kind of worried. I'm like, you know, I was like, okay, I was getting sales, but it wasn't at the number that I anticipated getting until the end. And we'll talk about that in another video. But I focused more on promoting my Black Friday uh, sales on my social media, I focused more on producing that anticipation and excitement with my pre Black Friday offers. Um, this, and with my Black Friday offers and also uh, letting them run through Cyber Monday. So I focused on that. And I really didn't focus on the giveaway portion too much. I, I sent that email out and it was just a one email. What I should have did is I should have not only sent out that email for my newsletter um, family and subscribers, but I actually should have um, sent it out again to people that did not receive the email. I use Seguno, um email marketing through Shopify and they have an option where if you send out your first newsletter, and say, you know, this many people didn't open it, they can go ahead and resend that email to that certain group of people that didn't open it that, you know, may have accidentally deleted the email or the email got lost in uh, their block of other emails. So I should have done that. That wouldn't have taken too much time at all. I also should have promoted that giveaway multiple places. So on my Instagram, on my Facebook, probably even on my YouTube. Um, another thing that I should have done that I am going to do going forward is start promoting or linking my marketing campaigns in my emails. We're going to talk about that. I got, I got a lot of stuff planned. So make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already. But that's another thing that I want to start trying. And I thought about that because a lot of traffic that I get to my website results from my emails. So it'd be customers or potential customers reaching out and asking questions. But when I send back the reply to their question, not only is it that reply and the information that they were seeking, but it's also information about my business. It's also information about me, the owner. It's also information about my podcast and things like that. So I like to take advantage of every single interaction. And um, I like to position it in a way where my customer or my potential customers and clients are getting all the information that they need, but they're also left with additional resources in case they want to browse through what else I'm offering or what else they can benefit uh, from at that time. So I'm also going to start linking my marketing um, campaigns in my signature in my email. Now, that's another thing that I could have done um, that wouldn't have taken mo too much time to go ahead and do to start generating uh, more awareness to the giveaway. Um, now, taking it aside from hair, taking it away from my hair business for just a moment, I've seen other companies as well on social media offer giveaways. And one thing that I can say too that I wanted to put in this video is if you are a new company and you're doing a giveaway, which is a great recommendation, I recommend that a lot of times in my consul consultations as well. That's a great way to start uh, spreading the word about your business, getting people interested in things like that. However, if the only thing that you're promoting is you're giving away products and you haven't promoted the quality or the benefit of your product or the benefit of shopping with you, the benefit of going with your company, uh, your core values, if you haven't promoted that, I wouldn't rely on the giveaway solely to produce um, orders alone. Uh, yes, it's a great strategy to use, but it's a great strategy to use if it's used the right way and position in a way that's still going to um, enhance your business. And so a lot of times I see companies doing exactly what I just mentioned, coming out and they're doing giveaways, but no one really knows anything about their company. They have not promoted uh, any value-based information about their company, no benefits. Um, and in order to find out what your value is going to be, or what the value is going to be for that particular customer, you have to kind of, you know, you have to talk to them, whether it's verbal or, or uh, email or text, but they haven't put out a way to um, connect with their potential customers or clients. And I don't know their email address, um, I, their, their phone number isn't posted, um, their website says under construction. So there's really no way, you know, I, and sometimes even on their social media, it says don't DM. So it's like, okay, don't DM you. 
I don't know how to email you, don't know the phone number, but you're doing a giveaway. Okay, I do, you know, a giveaway is interesting. I may want what you're offering. Who doesn't want free things? However, um, I want to know that even when I'm when I'm uh, putting my time into researching and putting my time into following these steps, it's going to be worth it. You know, tell me a little bit about your company. So don't lose out on the opportunity to actually build legitimate uh, business and consistent business and repeat business um, by only focusing on what you're giving out and not really focused on why customers should come to you even after the giveaway ends. So promoting. The next thing that I wanna go over is don't overcomplicate the steps. Um, this is something I've mentioned too. I didn't overcomplicate the steps with my giveaway this time, um, but I have had experiences where I have created different giveaways, especially when I just got started. And I had lots of steps, about 10 steps, and I had to go back and revisit the steps and I had to re redo it because that was just too many steps. And I had to put myself in the customer's shoes or in my potential customers and clients' shoes and, and ask myself, would I do 10 steps for this? And even if you don't, you know, and, that, and I, I, I try to tread lightly when I say put yourself in their shoes because sometimes I'll have uh, business owners that I work with that have put themselves in their customer's shoes so they think and they talk themselves out of, the right pricing for their business or, you know, hey, I wouldn't do this. So they won't do it either. Hey, I don't know if I would purchase from me. So I'm they're not going to purchase from me. It's good to put yourself in their shoes to an extent, but it's also good to make sure that you're looking at your business for the value that it truly provides and looking at your business, not just as your baby, but as a legitimate functioning business. Sometimes you have to look at your business at the potential and not just where it's at currently, especially business owners that are just getting started. Your business can be it can end up, you know, being a multi-billion dollar business years down the line. Um, but right now it's just starting off. So you still want to make sure that you're looking at it for its potential and not just looking at it for what it is. Okay. Yeah. It's just a website right now. Maybe it is right now, but if that's how you're seeing your business and that's how other people are going to see it as well. I just want to put that out there too. But anyways, I was going to say, don't overcomplicate the steps. The steps don't have to be 15 steps in order for um, you'd actually get what you're looking to get from the giveaway because a giveaway should be a two-way street. You know, not only are you giving things out or giving something away, but you should also be getting something in return, whether that be more followers, more website traffic, um, potentially more sales by customers actually going to your site for the giveaway and being able to see everything that you offer, more subscribers, um, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever your campaign is for your business, uh, whatever you're looking to get, it should be a two-way street, but don't overcomplicate the steps. I would try to remember to keep the steps between um, maybe three and five, three and five key points that you want people to do and to remember in order to participate in this giveaway. Um, the next tip that I have is consider a raffle if your giveaway is in the midst of a huge event or sale to grab more attention. So with my experience, because I was doing a giveaway in the middle of my Black Friday, which is a huge sale um, uh, campaign, I would, if I could go back, I would have did kind of like a raffle. Now, when you do a raffle, in my opinion, it it, it locks your, your audience in more than a giveaway. What I mean by that is when people invest into something, they're more interested. So if you have someone that's investing in the giveaway, which is typically what a raffle is, they're investing in it. And even if they pay a dollar, um, a lot of people are going to be more interested in that giveaway than people that didn't pay or in that raffle than um, people that didn't pay anything. You know, sometimes there have been giveaways, even on this platform where people have said, you know, hey, so-and-so is the winner. They won the giveaway. He won the giveaway. She won the giveaway. And they can't get in touch with the giveaway winners. Like it's like the giveaway winners are just, uh, I don't know. They may have forgot that they entered into the giveaway. They may have deactivated their, their Facebook or YouTube or <clears throat> whatever the case may be. Um, but they can't get in touch with those winners. So they have to go ahead and redraw or, you know, um, put their names into the system to, re, you know, choose some other winners. Uh, but a lot of times if you invest something, so if you would have paid like a dollar or two dollars or five dollars for a raffle, um, a lot of times that's going to keep people's attention. They're going to be following that giveaway more closely. And when people have more attention on what you're offering, you have the ability to talk more about not only the raffle, but your business too. Uh, with your updates and, you know, letting them know that, uh, you know, there's two more days to enter. Also, be sure to check out uh, our blog here where we go over different tips and information on how to uh, sell lashes this month. If you are interested in starting your lash business, and then you can go ahead and still promote additional information with your business. So it's all about being strategic. Nothing wrong with offering giveaways, nothing wrong with offering raffles. 
but we have to be strategic in how we do it. And sometimes it's going to take trial and error, seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. And um, although giveaways are great to do, I noticed that sometimes your giveaways can be overlooked if there's a, a more focus on another campaign um, that you're doing. For example, my situation, I was more focused in promoting more Black Friday and I really didn't promote um, my giveaway at all, you know, at all. So um, if I would have put like a raffle and I didn't promote the raffle information, except that one time that I sent out the email, I still probably would have had the same results. So it still kind of boils down to promoting and how you're going to position the giveaway. So if you've had lack of participation, look back at your promotion and not just how many times you posted the same um, graphic picture or the same um, giveaway flyer that you created, but really how many times did you take time to strategically write out a caption and information that goes over uh, the benefit of what you're giving out and also additional information tailored to the whole purpose you decided to create the giveaway. Um, and then the last thing that I want to go over is if no interaction and the giveaway is still open, provide updates about it. So that goes back to promoting. Um, if you notice that you don't have any interaction within the giveaway and the giveaway is still open, like there's still time for people to actually participate, make sure that you're providing updates. Updating your audience is another way to promote. Um, I think sometimes we put so much thought into promoting, which we should put thought into promoting, but sometimes we can overthink it. And we're like, look, I'm not gonna put anything out because I just don't know what else to say, but think about it, really think about it. And that's why I say in a lot of my videos, it's really important to have a clear idea of what you're doing this for. Um, when I do consultations and people say, I did this because someone else did it, um, I really like to challenge that thought, that thinking process, and I get where it comes from because I think we've all been in a position where we tried some things and we may have not known exactly why we did it. We knew that we were doing it in hopes of growing our business, but we're like, okay, I don't know. I don't know. I saw someone else had great success, so I tried to do it too. It has to be, it should be deeper than that. Because if I'm promoting, I, I did my giveaway to promote my Black Friday sale too. Um, and also to provide an incentive for those that were subscribed to my mailing list. And not just that, but to also provide updates on my business. Now, I didn't end up promoting it or providing updates on my business, such as different products that I'm offering or um, for the Black Friday sale that was going to happen or the pre-Black Friday sale that was happening. I didn't do that. And like I said, I, I should have done that. I should have promoted a lot more. Um, but providing updates is another way to promote without necessarily saying the same things. Um, we don't want to get spammy with our promotions where we're just posting a whole bunch of flyers that look exactly the same with the exact same hashtag under it. And that's just it. We want to make sure that we're explaining, especially if we're a smaller business. Now, once you get your business grown to the point that, I mean, you can just post the picture and you automatically get thousands of interested people that are interested in the giveaway. Okay, then we may want to go back to the drawing board and change up your marketing strategy. You may not have to do the same steps. But for a lot of us that are getting started, maybe um, have been in business less than, uh, what, a year or less than two years, uh, it's really important that we build that relationship and we actually take the time to explain who our business is and what we can offer and also directing them to our newsletter. So that's what we're promoting to our website. If we're promoting a sale that's happening there um, to our Instagram, if we're looking at getting more followers, whatever we're looking at doing, everything that we do, uh, instead of just having a sale, you know, the sale is what you put out to your customers and your clients. But behind that sale, there should be a campaign strategy. There should be a whole purpose and a whole, I'm doing this. Okay. And then I'm doing this. And I'm, it, there should be a whole step process behind your sale that you put out. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, those are some tips that can help if you do experience lack of participation um, or if you have experienced lack of participation with giveaways. Um, going forward, I'm definitely going to structure my giveaway differently, leaning more so to how I did in the past and not how I did this time around. I knew better. Um, I just, like I said, I was focused on a uh, different campaign strategy. And, you know, that campaign definitely benefited from me focusing a lot on that. Um, however, my giveaway portion did not. So I do want to say if you have experience doing a giveaway and you have not received or did not receive the 
um, participation that you expected. It's still okay. Um, if nothing else, you still promote it and you still provide an advertising for your business. Even me, I like to look at both ends of the spectrum. So yes, I could have definitely done some things differently and better to enhance the participation and the overall results of that campaign and that marketing strategy. However, on the flip side, it still did provide awareness. There were still lots of people that opened the email. There are still people that read through it, clicked different um, images in my uh, email to go to my website. There were still uh, their advantages, you know what I mean? And even people that clicked on just the, the email, uh, it's still a reminder that my company is here, you know? So if nothing else, it still serves as free advertising. Um, I did my entire Black Friday marketing strategy without any paid ads. And, um, you know, I, I'm really enjoying uh, the benefits that I'm seeing from growing organic uh, clients and customers versus is the way that I did it in the past where I did different ads and I was out of lots and lots of money. And by the time I ended up looking at everything at the end of my marketing campaigns, I was out of more money advertising than I actually made um, with my sale. Or I was, you know, the advertising took a lot of money out of my sales so that I was left with not as much as I anticipated walking away from or pocketing. Um, we'll talk about that later in some other videos too. But either way, it's still uh, advertising and it's still a learning experience for you, for you to figure out what worked and what didn't. So don't get on yourself too bad. You're still doing fine. Businesses, like I said, trial and error. Uh, so I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.